Have you ever seen those plus or X icons on set or on some footage that you're editing and thought, are these markers actually useful? Well, today you're gonna learn what these markers are and how to use them in a variety of tracking shots. Let's jump on in. If you don't already know, motion tracking is essentially extracting data movement from a particular area in your video and applying it to something else. It's that simple. And tracking is the most important step to add 2D or 3D elements to your scene. And tracking markers can make it a heck of a lot easier to complete the track. You might see VFX coordinators on set working with cinematographers and the on-set team to place tracking markers accordingly to make the compositor's life easier, or if you are tracking and compositing screens, you can create a screensaver that has tracking markers on it. The reason why you see markers mainly on green screen footage is because compositors and VFX artists need something to track. If there's no tracking points, it makes it more difficult, right? So that's why you place the tracking point so you can easily track the motion of that area and apply something to it. All right, so let me show you how to use these tracking points. Let's jump on into After Effects. So here I've licensed some stock footage right inside of After Effects using the Storyblocks plugin, which is super convenient because I can stay inside of the app. So as you can see, tracking points come in all different shapes and sizes, and that's because one size doesn't fit all. And oftentimes you'll get shots where there are no tracking points. There's actually some that are naturally in the scene. For example, like this shot here, you can see that these screws on the sign serve as a perfect tracking point. The key for a good tracking point is that there's enough contrast so After Effects can keep track of it. And also, if they're human-made tracking points, you don't want them to be too big, because remember, after you're done tracking, you're going to have to remove them. All right, so for this first shot, let's start with the basics. Let's start by dropping the footage into the timeline. Let's right-click and choose Track Motion. This will open up this little tracker tab here. And because this shot has a camera moving inwards, we need to also tick rotation and scale. So this will give us two tracking points. Let's move both of them to different markers here. And the inner box is the tracking area. So I'll make it as small as these markers. And the outer box is the search area. So if your shot has drastic camera movements, you wanna make sure this box is big enough to find the markers in the next frame. Now hit analyze forward to start tracking. And if at any time the tracker goes off frame, just move the tracker point back at that frame that started to go off and then continue tracking forwards. Although if you do have clear tracking markers, then you shouldn't have a problem with this. So once it's done, we're gonna create a null layer, which is essentially an empty layer that serves as a target that we can dump all of our tracking data to. And then you can hit apply. So now you can see the null object is sticking exactly to our sign here. So with this simple setup, I can add any element and connect it to the null object. For example, because this is a road sign, I actually used Photoshop to mock up a sample road sign that actually says like this video instead. So what I've done is I've dropped the PSD file inside of the comp, and now I'm going to scale it and position it to the sign. And then from there, we need to parent it to the null object's motion. And then voila, it sticks exactly to the sign and looks like it's a part of the scene. Now, since these tracking markers are part of the scene, we don't necessarily want to remove them, right? Because they should be here. But if I wanted to, I could actually save a frame of this footage here as a Photoshop file. So that way I can use Photoshop to get rid of the tracking markers. And then I can add anything to the sign before importing it back in After Effects and parenting it to the null layer like earlier to cover up the original design. Now it's time to tackle one of the most common tracking shots, and that is screens. And I'll also be giving you tips on how to make it look like your composite is actually on the screen to make it look more realistic. So this time we have multiple screens plus a person sitting in front of them. But the tracking process is actually pretty simple. So what I did is motion track the markers here that stay visible throughout the video. And of course we need to apply this data to a null layer like we did before. So now let's go to the Storybox plugin and let's search for some hacker style footage. Let's drop it in the timeline and then we can pre-comp all of them separately. This is like nesting, but in After Effects it's called pre-comping. And you'll see why we pre-comp them just in a bit. So now we can move and scale down all the pre-comps to fit all four screens. And let's move all the pre-comp layers below the footage 
for now. So it wouldn't be post-production if there weren't a few problems that we needed to tackle. Firstly, we need to get rid of the markers. And second, we need to make sure that the screen footage is behind the person in front of the screens and also inside of the borders of the computer. Let's start with the hacker. So first let's duplicate the footage and on the top layer, use the rotor brush tool to mask out the subject. If you're new to rotoscoping, I recommend watching this video here after this video to learn more about it. So once I have a good roto, the key here is to use this freeze button to save our roto data. So that way After Effects doesn't try to recalculate the roto every time we hit play. So now we have our layer just with our subject. For the bottom layer here, let's add the key light effect to get rid of the green so we can finally see what's on the screens. You could try to get rid of these tracking markers here by bumping up the screen D-spot white. And if your markers are small enough, this might be all you need. But for us in this case, it isn't enough. So what I can do here is add a square mask on all the screens and set them to subtract to remove the markers. Then we can keyframe their paths and then move them to follow the screen. And remember, the mask doesn't have to be perfect. As long as they cover up the markers, then you're good. The hard part is finally done. But if you take a look at the screens here, they don't really look like real screens. Let's fix that. On all the screen pre-comps here, let's add a slight lens blur and add some noise to make the screens feel like a part of the actual footage. But the screens still look a little bit too crisp for my liking because normally when you film a screen using a camera, you get a little bit of pixelation and distortion happening, which we don't have here. So to mimic this type of effect, let's go into one of the pre-comps and create a light blue solid to the top. Then we can add the Venetian blinds effect to this solid layer. Let's lower the transition completion and width until you have a bunch of small lines. Then we can duplicate this effect and on the second one, change the direction to 90 degrees and now you'll get a bunch of blue dots. Then we can add a little bit of Gaussian blur and change the blend mode to add. Now I can copy this layer to all the other pre-comps so they all get the same effect. For some final touches, I added this glow effect to all the screens here, and I also used this free plugin to create a light wrap around my subject so it feels like the light from the screen is shining through. So I really think that this helps blend it all together and make it look like the screens actually belong in this space. Let's see the result. So this is great and all, but what do we do if we don't have any tracking markers to work from? Since I got this clip from Storyblocks, they actually added these tracking markers at the end of the video, which is so useful. That means I can save a ton of time by duplicating this footage, lining up the second half of the clip here to the first half, and use a simple motion track or a corner pin track on these markers to get the perfect tracking data in no time. So once I get what I need, I can delete this layer and add in my own composite and rock and roll. And using Storyblocks has saved me and my team a ton of time. From finding the perfect B-roll, to visualize my points, to loads of animation templates with a variety of styles, all of which are customizable to fit the theme of my branding. No more spending hours on an animation just for it to look basic, and I'm just scratching the surface. Storyblocks has been expanding their library to include loads of new sound effects, stock photos, and even 360 VR footage. It's pretty much all you need to help speed up your post-production workflow. And with just one subscription cost, you can get unlimited downloads of all these assets with an easy licensing process, I might add, so I can focus on creating without having to worry. If any of this sounds good to you, give Storyblocks a try by going to storyblocks.com slash premiere guy. Big thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this segment of the video. And now let's get back in to tracking. So let's put us in a scenario here where we don't have any tracking points. For example, this billboard shot from Storyblocks, if they didn't include that tracking data at the end, how would we tackle it? So when we look at this shot here, you can also see that there are many moving elements like these trees and cars in the background. It makes it hard to find a good place to track. In these buildings in the background here, they won't work as tracking points either because we're trying to stick something to this billboard in the foreground, right? Which moves differently than the stuff in the background due to the parallax effect. So I tried sticking some tracking points here to parts of the billboard, but since there aren't any good stable points to track, 
It was impossible, unless I feel like fixing each point manually, which would take me hours. So if you run into this problem scenario that we've set up here, I would suggest 3D tracking. To do this, instead of choosing track motion, we're going to pick track camera instead. So After Effects will track the scene for you with a bunch of different tracking markers. And all I have to do is pick ones that stick well. Well, wait a second, none of them do. So like I said before, the billboard doesn't have any details to track, right? Because it's just a green flat plane. So all the points here that it created are stuck to areas in the video frame that we don't want to track. So to fix this, let's narrow down the tracking area by pre-comping the footage. And inside the pre-comp, let's draw a mask around the billboard to make the rest of the frame black. Back at the main comp, let's start the camera track on the pre-comp here once again. And now After Effects will try its best to add tracking point to the visible area. And what do you say? We finally got some good tracking points here on the billboard. If you're still struggling here, try tweaking some of the settings and effect controls. Like for example, you can change the shot type to variable zoom if your footage has any type of zoom in motion. Or you can change the solve method to something that best describes your footage. For the best results, we want the average error here to be below one pixel. You could also delete unwanted points to help lower this number. So what we need to do now is find three tracking points here that stick to the board best. Let's select them, right click, and choose create null and camera. So After Effects basically creates a virtual camera that mimics what the real camera is doing, and it creates a null object here in the 3D space. So now I can drop in an image that's going to replace that billboard or some moving footage if you want it to be a video plane on that billboard. And then you can click this button here to make this layer 3D. If you don't see these options, try toggling the switch below. Then we can select the null layer and press P. And here we want to copy this position data, and then we can paste it on our image here. This will move the image where the billboard is in 3D space. And then you can move, rotate, and resize it to fit the billboard area. And if I hit play now, it sticks. But we're not done. We want the image here to only show up in the green area. So let's move the image below the footage layer, add key light to the footage, and color pick the green to get rid of it. You can change some of these settings to get a better key, but this looks good right off the bat because it's a pretty bright green all solid layer. The only problem here is that all the trees get affected by this key light. So to avoid this, we also need to draw a rough mask here around the green area and keyframe its path to follow the movements. So with the footage layer selected, press E on your keyboard and down in the key lights compositing options, let's hit the plus icon to apply our mask to the key light effect. And here's our billboard. So it should be obvious now how important tracking is to adding any elements to your scene. This might involve, you know, some more pre-production on set to make sure that you're placing the correct tracking markers so that way your life will be a lot easier in post-production. Or if it's too complicated to add tracking points, you may have a chat and decide maybe we can shoot this shot on a tripod instead. And then in post-production, you can add that fake movement on top of it with kind of a handheld shake, which is another way to fake motion as well. If you want more After Effects videos on this channel, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you wanna level up your After Effects skills even more, you can click this video right here. That's all for today's video. And as always, keep creating better video with the gal. See you next time. Bye. Woo!